can we just take a minute, a moment, to give you praise? The song is gratitude. We need to show our gratitude, our thanksgiving to the Lord. I, I, I'm looking today at Ecclesiastes 8, and it says, And no man has the power over the day of his death. <laughs> Holy Jesus. <laughs> and I'm blown away. And I'm starting this stream today going, oh, my God. And it talks about worship. And so I had to put in here, after reading verse 8, 1 Corinthians 15, let's, let's just, let's meditate on it. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 54 and 55. And when this perishable, meaning this gene pool from your mom and dad, your flesh, puts on the imperishable, an eternal body, wow. And this mortal puts on immortality. The Amplified includes, you see, this that was capable of dying will one day be finished and will put on freedom from death. Wow. Ah, oh, come on. Let's just stay here for a minute. We're going to put on what? Freedom from death. Then the scripture will be fulfilled that said, Death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory, vanquished forever. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. It is vanquished forever by the resurrection life of the Lamb. By the resurrection life of our Lamb, the Lamb of God, my Lord. The resurrection life of the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. Here it is again, yeah. Death is swallowed up in victory. Woo! Death is swallowed up in victory. It's vanquished forever. Death is vanquished forever by the resurrection life of the Son of God, the Son of Man. The one who rose from the dead, yeah, Jesus, King of life, resurrection life, is what you said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Woo, we love you for that, Lord. You are the the life forever. Here it is one more time. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death was swallowed up in your victory. Jesus, death was swallowed up. Oh my God, in your victory, vanquish forever. Resurrection life, vanquished forever. Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. We love you for all of this that you've done for us. Yeah, the resurrection and the life. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? 1 Corinthians 15, 54 and 55. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, death. Don't you love it? This is so freeing to sing this today. Where is your victory? Jesus, the resurrected lamb, overcame you. Ha, ha. Oh, death. Where is your sting here? Yeah. The sting of death was in sin. The power of sin by which it brings death. 
it was through the law. But here it is, check it out. But thanks be to God who gives us a victory. His victory. But thanks be to God who gives us your Jesus, you gave us your victory. Shut up. It is so good, yeah. But thanks be to our living God who gives us his victory. Yeah. The Amplified says, making us conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. What happened? You made us your conquerors through the death and resurrection life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, but thanks to our living God who gives us his victory. Yeah. You gave us your victory. Oh, but thanks be to our God who gives us, you gave us your victory. You gave us your victory. You gave us, you, you gave us your victory. Yeah. Making us more than conquerors. Well, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Jesus, you, you smote it, Lord. You overcame death. <laughs> Woo, give me a few minutes. Oh, my God. Because, you know, everybody, death and, hey, you cannot run death in taxes. You might be able to run out, out run taxes, but Ecclesiastes 8 today will prove you cannot run death. It's in the hands of the Lord. <laughs> and I had to, it was so overwhelming. Let me do Romans 8, 34. We've been in 1 Corinthians 15, 54 and 55, because I just can't stop singing it. I am so grateful. Chapter 8 of Ecclesiastes, just, it's, it gives us a freedom. Death will come for every man, but eternal life is on the other side. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, death is number two. The, the most, um, the, the things that people are most afraid of, it's number two below public speaking, but it's still number two. Number one, the greatest fear any human being can, can have, depending on their personality type, the fear of public speaking is number one in USA Today. The, the beat goes on every time they survey. Number two is death, but at least it's up there. <laughs> Romans 8, verse 34. Who has the, the authority to condemn? Jesus, the anointed who died. But more importantly... He conquered death when he was raised to sit at the right hand of God the Father where he pleads on our behalf. Oh, man. Hey, now. This is some kind of stream today, buddy. Who has the authority to condemn you? Well, Jesus, the anointed one who died, but more importantly, he conquered death. I know you didn't hear me. He conquered death. It's in an echo chamber. He conquered death. He conquered death. He conquered death. He conquered death. You conquered death. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Thank you, Jesus, 
for what we have become in you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for what you You conquered death. You conquered death. You conquered death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what we become in you more than conquerors. Yeah. You made us more than conquerors. Yeah. You gave us the resurrection victory. Can't stop singing about it right here, right now. I don't want to stop singing about it right here, right now. You gave us the victory. You conquered death. <laughs> you conquered death. And I've got such great joy because of what you've done. You conquered death. I'm, I'm playing really hard and I'm singing really hard because I'm really excited that he conquered death. You conquered death. No more fear. No more fear. You conquered. The enemy can't use it against us. The devil and principalities and demons cannot use. You can't scare us with death anymore, buddies, because Jesus conquered death. Lazarus is only sleeping. <laughs> Jesus, you're too late. My brother's been in the grave four days already, and he stinketh. <laughs> and Jesus, in his own way, looked at Martha. He loved Martha and Mary. He said, he's only sleeping. Martha, he's only sleeping. <laughs> then he said, I am the resurrection and the life. I believe we're going to see more signs and wonders. Carla was talking the other day about even the apostles prayed and confirm everything we're speaking with your signs and wonders, Lord. Oh, my God. Confirm every, everything that we're speaking. I believe we're going to see really tremendous miracles because they're only sleeping. A group of remnant believers are rising up, and you won't even know their names. They don't want you to know their name. They want you to know Jesus. They're going to raise the dead. They're going to they're going to decree and release cancer out of people's gallbladders, their livers, their kidney. They're going to release people from cancer. It's in the Bible. He's the God of miracles. I'm not even sure how I got onto this day, but I'm really enjoying it and having fun. <laughs> I like singing to the Lord. And just so you know, I bring this all back. It's simple to remember, Ecclesiastes 8.8, 8, 8, 8, 8. None of us can hold back our spirit from departing. None of us has the power to prevent the day of our death. That, that is so ground leveling, isn't it? Hey man, I'm a small man. My dad made a comment, you know, one day, and it was under not really good circumstances. He said, well, I'm my own man. I said, well, bro, that's pretty arrogant. It was pretty full of, full of pride. And I said, Lord, how? I'm not repeating that ever. I am not my own man. I'm, first of all, I'm your man. But I, I, I responded, I, I'm a small man. And this, this proves it right here, because the most powerful and by the way, Solomon, the most wealthy, the Queen of Sheba came to see him. He, he's writing this. Either he's, a scribe is writing down as he's dictating or it's when he's older. And he says, hey, guess what? New Living Translation. None of us has the power to prevent the day of our death. There's no escaping that obligation. The dark battle and the fa in the face of death, wickedness, though, will certainly not rescue the wicked. Whoa, thanks for redeeming that straight up. This is Ecclesiastes 8.8. 8. We'll get into the narration in a minute. Carla took a shower. She looks great. She did her hair. <laughs> She's here in all of her glory. But, man, I said, Lord, this is a ground leveler. Uh, I had some stuff to do on our, our modular home. The workers are here from Three Stone Homes. And uh, I came in about 12, and I went, 
Wow. Jesus, let's, let's have a minute here. All my words fall short. Let's worship. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? sing these songs as I often do I know every song must end but Lord you never do you guys ready? you know it so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again Cause all that I have is this hallelujah, hallelujah, and I know it's not much, I've got nothing else fit for my king, except for my tiny heart singing hallelujah.
come on my soul and don't you get shy on me lift up your soul cause you've got a, I've got a lion inside of my lungs so get up and pray the Lord so come on my soul and don't you get shy on me lift up your soul Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and pray the Lord. Yeah. Come on one more time. Yeah. So come on my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your soul. You've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and pray the Lord. We're going to get up and praise you, Lord, all over this land. Get up and praise you all over every nation, all over the world. Yeah, Get up and praise. Get up and praise. Get up and praise. The living God, they praise the Lord. so glad that we're in this book starting our summer a little bit over halfway the book of Ecclesiastes I have a number of people thank me dude this book thoroughly gets your attention and remember the bottom line I said Lord you got to give me give me one quintessential New Testament scripture that deals with vanity because the preacher said vanity vanity all is vanity he said it three or four times in a row he said kent first peter 4 11 everything you do do it for my glory you defeat vanity straight up Woo! thanks for sharing this sounds good why don't you preach on it well not right now we're going to do a bible narration carla's going to read us in with our keynote scripture ecclesiastes 8. the key scriptures today are verses 5 through 8. He who keeps the king's command will experience nothing harmful, and a wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment. A wise man knows both time and judgment. Wow. Whoever keeps and observes a royal command will experience neither trouble nor misery, for a wise heart will know the proper time and appropriate procedure. Whoever does what the king commands will stay out of trouble, and wow. the wise heart will figure out the proper time and proper way to proceed. Because for every matter there is a time and a judgment, though the misery of man increases greatly oh, or is great upon him. For he does not know what will happen, so who can tell him when it will occur? No one has power over the spirit to retain the spirit, and no one has power in the day of death. There is no release from that war, and wickedness will not deliver those who are given to it. None of us can hold back our spirit from departing. None of us has the power to prevent the day of our death. But there is no escaping that obligation, wow. that dark battle, and the face of death, wickedness, 
will certainly not rescue the wicked. Wow. So let's rest for a minute, man. This last scripture. None of us has the power to prevent the day of our death. There's no escaping that obligation. In the dark battle and in the face of death. See, wicked people think they're going to cross over and just keep doing what they're doing. They're totally deceived. Verse 8 says, guess what? Wickedness will certainly not rescue you, you wicked man or woman, not in the presence of Almighty God. <laughs> so Matthew Henry, I start with this. Whatever other evils man can avoid in his lifetime, we are all under, check this out, a fatal necessity of dying. <laughs> Only the old school commentators that talk in old English can say it like that. We're all under the fatal necessity of dying. When the soul is required, it must be resigned. It is of no purpose to dispute it because he's God and you're not. <laughs> I included that. That was me either by arms or arguments, by ourselves or by any friend, there is no man that has the power over his own spirit to retain it. Man. When it is summoned to return to God who gave it, it will return. A man has no power to adjourn the day of his death, nor can he by prayers or bribes obtain a re reprieve. <sighs> No bail will be taken. No excuse or protection. Our conferencing will be allowed. And then he numbered, number one, the prince, with all of his authority, cannot prolong the life of his most valuable subjects. Hear it again. There's five categories that Matthew Henry, the commentator, he actually expresses here. The prince, with all of his power, and all of his wealth, with all of his authority, cannot prolong the life of one of his most valuable subjects. And then there's the physician with his medicines and his, method, his methods. He can also not prevent the day of a mortal's life. Then you have number three, the soldier with all of his force, his guns, and his ammos, that cannot prevent the day of death either. And then there's the order, the talker, the speaker. With all of his eloquence, he's not talking his way out of the day appointed for his return, his spirit to return to his maker. Amazing. Yeah, some people are smooth talkers, bro. You can't talk your way out of this one. The number five, it's interesting. He mentions the best saint of all, with all of his intercessions, cannot change this appointed day because your life is written in the book of God. And we finish with Matthew Henry there, but I included. The, this news to me is so freeing as we understand Jesus conquered death forever. Somebody shout hallelujah online, dog. Woo! We understand Jesus. I mean, they did not have this Messiah. They did not have Jesus present. He had not gone to the cross yet. And so the very thing that causes great consternation, Romans 8.34 he, who has the authority to condemn? Jesus, the anointed one who died. But more importantly, he doesn't condemn. He conquered death when he was raised up to sit at the right hand of God, where he pleads on our behalf. And then gigantic scripture of the century, 1 Corinthians 15. It's a long, long chapter. I'm actually saying verses 54 and 55. <laughs> one of the longest chapters in the New Testament. And when this perishable, meaning your flesh, puts on the imperishable, and this mortality puts on immortality, the Amplified says, this that was capable of dying will put on freedom from death. Oh, i got to say it a couple times. This that was capable of dying will be changed, and we're going to put on freedom from death and immortality. Then, 
the scripture will be fulfilled that says, death is swallowed up in victory. It's vanquished forever. Death is swallowed up in his victory. Vanquished forever. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. And the power of that sin by which it brings death was the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory and his victory. Woo! He made us conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. We start at verse 1, chapter 8, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 1, 8, verse 1. Jesus. Who is like a wise man and who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom makes his face shine, and the sternness of his face is changed. Wow. Who is like a wise man, and who knows the interpretation of a matter? A man's wisdom illuminates his face and causes his stern face to beam. Who is like the wise person? Who can understand what things mean? Who knows the interpretation of a matter? Wisdom brings happiness, brightens one's face. It makes sad faces happy. It changes their stern, hard expression. I say, keep the king's commandment for the sake of your oath to God. Do not be hasty to go from his presence. Do not take your stand for an evil thing, for he, the king, does whatever pleases him. That's right, wow. I counsel you to keep the command of the king because of the oath before God by which you swore loyalty to him. Do not be in a hurry to get out of his presence. Do not join in a harmful matter, for the king will do whatever he pleases. And if you elevate this king Solomon's talking about to the king of glory, wow. You want to make sure you're in agreement with him. So we're going to sing part of verse 1. A man's wisdom illuminates his face, causing his stern face to beam, his stern face to change. I said, a, a man's wisdom illuminates his face and causes his stern face to be me with the light of the Lord a man's wisdom makes his face shine it illuminates his face and his face is changed his face is changed a man's wisdom does illuminate his face causes his stern face to change and he's beaming with the light of the Lord yeah, isn't that awesome what an awesome scripture a positive thing right here in the middle of the book of Ecclesiastes verses 4, 5, and 6 where the Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say to him, what are you doing? Oh, I think not. I think not. Where the word of the king is, there is power. And who is going to mouth off and say to him, what are you doing, king? He who keeps his command will experience nothing harmful. And a wise man's heart discerns and knows both the time and the judgment. Because for every matter there is a time and a judgment, though the misery of a man increases greatly. Hear it again. Verse 5. He who keeps the king's commandment will experience nothing harmful. 
And I love this. A wise man heart discerns and knows both the time and the judgment because for every matter, there is a time, there is a judgment. It's like reminiscent of chapter 3 where there's a time under heaven for everything. Even though the misery of a man increases on him greatly. Verse 5, whoever keeps and observes a royal command will experience neither trouble nor misery. For a wise heart will know the proper time and the appropriate procedure. Amplified Bible. A wise heart knows the proper time. See, that's totally led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will show you the proper time. And he'll also show you the appropriate procedure for that moment. Whether it's prayer, it's business, it could be in church, it could be outside, it could be a Bible study. We rely on the Holy Spirit. Whoever does what the king commands will stay out of trouble. So let's do what the king of king commands. How about that? Apply this straight up to the king of kings. Whoever does what the king of kings commands will stay out of trouble. And the wise heart will figure out the proper time and the proper way to proceed. That's the voice translation. Because for every matter, what? There is a time and a judgment. Though the misery of man increases greatly or is great upon him, for he does not know what will happen. So who can tell him when it will occur? No one has power over the spirit to retain the spirit. And no one has power over the day of death. There's no release from that war. And wickedness will not deliver those who are given to it. One last thing, the new living, I was overwhelmed by it. None of us can hold back our spirit from departing. None of us has the power to prevent the day of our death. There's no escaping that obligation. The dark battle and in the face of death, wickedness will certainly not certainly not rescue the wicked. It's just a moment to to think before the Lord. We're we're small people. We're more than conquerors. But man, I, I am a small man. And I'm just finding my way down the road as a New Testament spirit-filled believer doing the will of my Father in Jesus' name. We go verse 9, 10, and 11. All this I have seen and applied my heart to every work that is done under the sun. There is a time in which one man rules over another to his own hurt. Then I saw the wicked buried, who had come and gone from the place of holiness, and they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This also is vanity, because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. All this I have seen while applying my mind to every deed that is done under the sun. There is a time in which one man has exercised power over others to their detriment. So then I have seen the wicked buried, those who used to go in and out of the holy place, but did not thereby escape their doom. And they are praised in spite of their evil right. and soon forgotten in the city where they did such things. This too is futility, vanity, emptiness. Because the sentence against an evil act is not executed quickly. The hearts of the sons of men are fully set to do evil. Wow. Wow. I have witnessed the wicked buried with honor because during their lifetime they would go in and out of the temple, and soon their crimes were forgotten in the very city where they committed them. Right. This too is fleeting. When the penalty for a crime is not carried out quickly, then people start scheming to commit their own crimes. Now, I want to take a minute, hon. 
I want you to comment on this because I knew it fell to you to do the narration. Isn't that amazing? We still have it going on today. I mean, I want you to comment it's on this. narrative of 2022, isn't it? It, it? Which is what? Come on, define it. Well, there's not quick punishment for crime, and so people think they can get away with it, and so they're out there plotting and planning to scheme and commit their own crimes. They see others getting away with it, and so they get away with it too. And that's why I wanted to stop. So don't fret yourself over it. Fret fly, super gang. <laughs> don't fret because this ticks me off. That justice, I couldn't believe Ecclesiastes verse 11, chapter eight is so self-evident because the sentence against an evil act is not executed quickly. The hearts of the sons of men are fully set to do evil. It's the Amplified Bible. You bunch of jerks. Stop it. <laughs> no, I was sitting here steaming. I was like going, Lord, this is so wrong. Justice is coming. Justice is coming. You guys are going to get served. <laughs> no, I was really fuming, man. I, I had, okay, back it down, Kent. Back it down a couple notches, bro. Jesus is on this throne. But I know people fret about this. They're really upset and ticked off. You can't stay ticked off about foolish men and evil people. But I, I think it's so important. The American church better be careful because you're going to look just like this man who went to the temple. He went in and out. He gave his little tithe. And yet he was doing obnoxious acts of evil, which the city, hey, we're not forgetting. what They celebrated him and gave him honor. I go, wait a minute. He was an evil man, a wicked man. You can't do that. But oh, the time just went on. But the Lord said, my day of justice is coming. When the penalty for a crime, this is the voice translation, is not carried out quickly, then people start scheming to commit their own crime. Boy, uh, cleanse Washington, D.C. Would that be all right to say that, Carla? Uh-oh, she's taking the mic. See a few more cr crumpled flags on the caskets? Well, here's what I'm saying. Don't fret yourself. Let's leave it in the hands of the Lord. We go on to verse 12, 13, and 14. You guys doing all right? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Here we go. Though a sinner does evil a hundred times, and his days are prolonged, yet I surely know this. Check. Get ready, you guys, that it will be well with those who fear, revere, and worship God. What? It's verse 12. Check it, you worshipers on this stream. If you're watching it after. Though a sinner does evil a hundred times and his days are prolonged, Solomon said, this is what I surely know, though. It will be well with those. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. For I'm a worshiper, a fearer of the Lord. It is well with my soul. It is well with, you know the hymn. Yeah, it is well with my soul because I'm a worshiper of the living God. Yeah, yeah. fearing and revering and worshiping the Lord. What were you doing, Kent? Fearing, revering, and worshiping Almighty God. Let's use his name. Fearing and revering and worshiping the Most High God. Here we are. Fearing and revering and worshiping the Most High. There it is. You got it right there. Verse 12. But it will not be well with the wicked. That's what I thought. Mm-hmm. All right. Nor will he prolong his days, which are like a shadow. Whoo! Because he does not fear before God. Get going, bro, for it's too late. It's never too, turn to the Lord. I, I, I'm looking at people that, ah, I don't need, maybe I'll, I'll turn to Jesus when I'm 70, when I'm 80. And you died in a car crash when you're 58. Oh my God. Is, is it, this stuff is so real to me. I'm telling you, sinner man, turn to the Lord. Sinner man, hear your, hear your buddy, Kent. Turn to the Lord before it's too late. Oh my God, this is real. Verse 14, there is a vanity which occurs on earth, for real, for sure. 
He said, there is a vanity which occurs on earth that there are just men to whom it happened according to the work of the wicked. And then again, they're the wicked to whom it happens according to the work of righteousness. And Solomon said, I see, and I said, this is all vanity. Here we go as the Amplified. Though a sinner does evil a hundred times, and his life seemingly is prolonged in spite of his wickedness. Remember, don't fret over it. He, he, the Amplified says, Still I know. Still I know. It will be well with those who reverently fear the Lord. Who fear and worship Him openly. Realizing his omnipresence and his power. This I'm singing the amplified transgrade a translation. Still I know well. What do you know, Kent? Still I know that it will be well with those who reverently fear the living God, who fear and worship him openly. They realize his omnipresence. They realize the power of the Most High God. Yeah. Solomon said this, still I know. What do you know, Solomon? Still I know that it will be well with those who reverently worship and fear the Lord, who fear and worship Him openly. Yeah. Worship Him openly. He said, if you confess me before men, I'm, I'm confessing you before the Father. Jesus did that for Ken Henry and for Carla and for Steve Hunt and for Mike Wood. We confessed him right out in the largeness of the world. He said, I'm confessing you before my Father. I went, Jesus, I love you for that. Thanks. Verse 13, I'm still in the Amplified. But it will not be well for the evil man. Nor will he lengthen his days like his shadow because he does not fear God. There is a meaningless and futile thing which is done on this earth. What is that, Solomon? Well, that there are righteous men whose gain is thought as though they were evil. And then there's evil men whose gain is as thought they were righteous, which is all a lie. It's a subterfuge. It's a facade. And he said, I say that this too is futility. It's meaningless and vain. That, that the righteous man, they talked about him as if he were evil. And then the evil man, who's gained, it's so convoluted. It's upside down. And I'll close verse 12 and 13 with the voice. Although a wicked person commits a hundred sins, and still lives a long life. I am confident it will be better for those who worship the one true God. What is it? Solomon said, I'm confident it will be go better for those who worship the one true God and stand in awe before him. It will not go well for the wicked, nor will their gr days grow longer. Like evening shadows, because they do not stand in awe of the Lord. Thank you, voice translation, because they do not stand in awe of God. They, they, their days may seem like they've grown long. It's going to be like evening shadows because they do not stand in awe of God. Wow. Last three verses, Miss Carla. When you think of... Uh this life is a vapor and compare it to right. eternity. Hey. I had a friend of mine right after I got saved, he, he said to me, I'm concerned about you. And I said, what are you concerned <laughs> about? He said, just this crazy stuff that you believe in. <laughs> he said, what are you going to do and you get to the, if you get to the end of your life and you find out that it's not true? And I said, well, Warren, I don't have any more guilt 
and I'm not walking around in condemnation and I'm happy and I have joy and peace. Isn't that something that you think people look for wow. in life? So what are you going to do when you get to the end of your life and find out that it is? That it is true. Yep. Oh my God, let's wait a minute now on that. So Warren was checking, you, you're in a cult group, you're in a weirdness, you're not Catholic anymore, you're not Lutheran or whatever. Oh my God, and how many people on this stream, that happened to them? Because when I got saved, my friends could not believe it. When I was spirit-filled, they go, there's no way. Ken Henry's a Jesus freak. He was a hell raiser, racing motorcycles, lead singer in a band. And they would say, did you really, are you really a Jesus freak? I said, yeah, didn't you hear I died? I'm a new creature now. So finish it out, Carla. That's and a great said, story. Oh, it's just a crutch. <laughs> oh, no, they said, yeah, it's just a crutch. I said, oh, no, I needed a stretcher. He came with a stretcher for me. Because <laughs> they said, I, 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 he's a crutch, all right. I'll take him whatever I got. But I needed a stretcher. So he came and got me with a stretcher, not just a crutch. <laughs> Go ahead, Carla. <laughs> Verse 15, 16, and 17. So I commended Woo! enjoyment because a man has nothing better under the sun than to eat, drink, and be merry. For this will remain with him in his labor all the days of his life, which God gives him under the sun. When I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the busyness that is done on earth, even though one sees no sleep day or night, wow. then I saw all the work of God. And a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. For though a man labors to discover it, yet he will not find it. Moreover, though a wise man attempts to know it, he will not be able to find it. Then I commend it pleasure and enjoyment, because a man without Jesus. God has no better thing under the sun than to eat, to drink, and to be merry. For this will stand by him in his toil, though the days of his life in which God, days of his life which God has given him under the sun. When I applied my mind to know wisdom and to see the activities of mankind that take place upon the earth, how some men seem to sleep neither day nor night, and I saw all the work of God, I concluded that man cannot discover the work that is done under the sun. Wow. Even Jeez. though man may labor in seeking, he will not discover. And more than that, though a wise man thinks and claims he knows, he will not be able to find it out. When I applied myself to the study of wisdom and reflected on the kinds of tasks that occupy people's attention on earth, I noticed how little sleep they generally get, whether it be day or night. Wow. I saw all the work and ways of God, and it became clear to me that no one is able to grasp fully this mystery called life. Try as we might, we cannot discover what has been done under the sun. Even if the wise claim to know, they really haven't discovered it. Not even the wisest people discover everything, no matter what they claim. And that's why we keep looking to you, looking to you, looking to you. I just want to say hi to Trev. I, I have the chat in front of me on a big screen Matt put up. Kamukapa. I don't know if I'm saying your last name right, but bro, you're welcome. I, I've never seen him on here before, Matt, but Trev, what a Trevor. I'm assuming that it's your given name. Kamukapa. Kamukapa. Say what? Zimbabwe. <laughs> That's my people, man. That's where I belong in Zimbabwe. It's so good, man. And I, I, I also see Jalisa is on today and stuff. Listen, this is the stuff right here, buddy. This is where you, rubber meets the road, Ecclesiastes. If you're a real believer, you'll get in it, study it, handle it. But if you're not a real believer, you don't want this. But it is full of truth and helpfulness in every way. So let's do it out this way, you guys. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Somebody worship Jesus. Open the, yeah, try to above that, man. Of my heart, there it is. 
and I want to see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see you open the eyes. Yeah. And open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Yeah. Open the eyes of my heart. And I want to see you. Yes, bro. I totally get it, man. He said, I want to share my family. Everyone is still dealing with the grief of losing both of our parents. I am really sorry, Trev. I have real empathy. I don't know how you lost both of them. I don't know if it's at the same time or within months of each other because of sickness. But dude, we live on in honor of your mom and dad. When people passed away in my life, even in my 20s after I knew the Lord, I went, okay, I'm living on. I'm going to buck up and go to a new level of strength. I'm bucking up to go to a new level of strength. Wow, Trevor. Yes, bro. I go to a new level of serving the Lord. God bless, man. Footballers are us. <laughs> I see this on your site, bro, on Facebook. Awesome. But, bro, it's a new day. Do not give up. Do not quit. This is a new day for His glory, including you and me and everybody on this stream, anybody watching in the future. Thanks for sharing your heart and your life with us, Trev. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Yeah, open the eyes of my heart, because I want to see you. Come on, let's do that chorus one time. High and lift it up. Yeah, 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 you are high and lifted up, yeah. Shining in the light of your glory, yeah. Pour out your power and love, yeah. soon we're going to stay deep in worship in the presence of our savior and we're going to stay in the word of god can't lose can't lose with that set up right there stay deep in the river of his presence day by day lifestyle worship wow and then stay in the book 66 books of the bible go ahead and try to memorize the whole thing the next five years and see what happens on that <laughs> Thank, I'm so glad it's a big 66 books. We're going to be in it. And when we cross over to eternity, there'll be levels of revelation never crossed your mind way beyond your pay grade. It's going to be awesome.
<laughs> God bless you guys. I will see you tomorrow at the Gateway House of Prayer in the prayer room. And Thursday, we're on to chapter 9. If you think you can take it, come along for the ride. I really love you guys. I appreciate you. God bless you. It's never goodbye. It's always to be continued. In Jesus' name, God bless.